This is Talk Radio. Across the UK, online, on DAB+, and on your smart speaker. Ian Collins, on Talk Radio. 0344 499 1000. Uh, we're talking... But we've moved on from masks. They don't exist anymore. What are they, masks? Well, apart from the trains and the shops and the various establishments, like most of them, they don't exist. Uh, I'm in a shop without a mask, says Anthea. People looking at me and avoiding me like I'm a zombie. There's a bit of that going on, isn't there? Um, I was absolutely delighted to jump on a train and see a, a man without a mask on. Because uh, suddenly I thought to myself, how many? And I would say 80% still mask wearing. Sam, would you echo that? About 80%? Yeah. Yeah, but possibly slightly more. But yeah, interesting uh, when you don't actually have to. Oh, three, four, 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 nine, nine, one thousand. Uh, let's look at this as well, uh, which continues into the story of nightclubs. Latest figures show 35 percent of 18 to 30 year olds have not had their first jab. The prime minister announcing yesterday COVID passports will be required to enter nightclubs by the end of September, showing proof of a double jab. Uh, what do young revelers Revelers again. Did we pick up that on yet last week, didn't we? Revelers. I'm going out reveling. Uh, well, let's speak to some people who r revel regularly. Um, Alexander, don't go away with you in just a second. Connor is in London. How, how are you, Connor? Oh, I'm good. Thank you very much, Ian. I'd love to be a reveler, but unfortunately I've been trapped inside for the last 18 months. Yes, it's been, you've been sort of revel-free, bereft of a revel, as it were. And so not, not ideal. Um, so you've got a medical condition which causes a problem with this passport issue anyway, right? Essentially so, yeah. So obviously we're advised as under 30s not to do the AstraZeneca and, and whatnot. I know America, so sure. Johnson and Johnson having similar issues with blood clots. I know they're meant to be very low risk, yeah. but they advise you to take Pfizer alternatively. The problem is with the NHS literature, the Pfizer vaccine says if you have something like anaphylaxis, which I have quite mm -hmm. severely, I'm one of those idiots who, if he gets on a plane and someone opens a Snickers, they've got to make an emergency landing because I'll just drop oh, it. Yeah, Essentially, I've, I've, I've been, said, I was in the seat behind you once, I think, Connor. <laughs> oh, you were the guy that was complaining that you can make <laughs> It was me, right? yes. okay. It's just a pee. Not, I said. <laughs> well, I hope you got champagne delivered anyway. <laughs> uh, but essentially, the, the thing that got posted through my door and is on the website, there's an anaphylaxis.org thing, which has some uh, mixed information. They essentially advise you to go and take one of the other ones if you're offered it. Now, the right. problem is, if you're not offered, if you're under 30, you're not offered AstraZeneca, and they say Johnson Johnson may be an issue, and they also say Pfizer could drop me dead more likely than COVID could, wow. I'm kind of left out in the cold here. Oh, man, I lie. What do, you, what do you do about this, then? Is there no... Because you're not the first person, Connor, I've spoken to, who, who you know, for very, people with various um, ailments or issues or, you know, a history of medical uh, situations that would throw up a problem. And yet there doesn't seem to be a specific answer to any of this. Well, they say on the website that you're allowed to claim some form of exemption. But the problem is, to try and divorce that from, from my personal circumstance, the fact that they're going to give you an exemption, like with masks, mm. um, that you can self-declare, one, you still have to use the framework, as it were, by accepting that we've got to base our liberties off of um, uh, the government saying you've got to be medically perfect, have a purity test in order to go about civil society. So you've got to buy into that. Uh, and second of all, the fact that I have to do that in the, in the first place, um, that creates a... Uh, how do I how do I put it? It sort of stigmatizes people like me. Well, it's a kind of an apartheid, isn't it, between you know, the yeah. healthy and the, the the unwashed, as it were. Well, it essentially says, okay, you have a social obligation, as Boris says, and even though they say, oh, it's voluntary for nightclubs to take up, but we don't want to have to close them again. So implicit in that is the threat that if yeah. you don't do this policy, you won't have a livelihood. Correct. Um, to to invert that relationship between the citizen and the state, rather than the state protecting you, being that you have to protect some arm of the state by sacrificing something of that. The moment the people have uh, an obligation to protect the state, if we have a debt, then the state can collect that in any way it wants. So mm -hmm. not only is it personally a problem for me, it, on principle, it's, it's totally immoral. Absolutely. And I think most, I, I can't imagine anybody disagreeing with that. So is there no way that you can have a specific, you know, you've got this NHS app and in there you can enter your test result. Obviously, you're, you're unable to, your 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 um, jab result, rather, uh, your, your batch number and all that business, as I understand it. You can't do that. So you'd think there would be some kind of uh, tab within the, the website or, or within the app that would allow you to enter a box or ticker box that would somehow address your, you and others and the particular circumstances it doesn't even have to have well, the detail you would hope so i don't know what the digital infrastructure itself is going to be at the moment obviously because they haven't rolled it out properly yeah um, they're not even implementing it till september and of course the as one of your uh 
listeners said earlier, why wouldn't they be implementing this tomorrow if there was a massive problem? Well, that's yeah, the nightclub I, sector. Yeah, and it's to, it's to create a window essentially where it says, okay, get this or else, because if it was a massive issue, you'd yeah. be doing it from tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but as far as I know, I don't, I'm not sure how the actual system is going to work. All it says on the website is you may be asked to give a valid reason on the doorstep as to why you can't have the vaccine in the first place, which is great. I want to be sitting there chatting to a bouncer about my entire medical history personally. Well, I mean, right. It's, it's great fun. That, that's unacceptable, <laughs> isn't it? That's completely unacceptable. Listen, Connor, let's, I mean, let's speak again, maybe in a few weeks, if we have got some clarity on this. And thank you for coming on with us. Really appreciate that. It's brilliantly highlighted one of the many issues around exemptions on this. And clearly, that is an area of concern. And I would imagine...